Hello all, it's Paul here, VK3MR. Today's project is uh, having a look at a bit of impedance on a high gain TH3 Junior. Uh, all of the traps and the antenna itself is checking out um, fine. This antenna requires or is recommended a BN86 1 to 1 ballon. So the problem that I've been experiencing when when uh, using the amplifier at around 350 to to 400 odd watts it's interfering with the with the, the frequency they're on so whenever you transmit the frequency goes up and down um, by several hertz and the radio just continually beeps uh, secondly getting a lot of um, RF back in through the uh, 10 band EQ, the UR6QW. Um, as you can see, I, um, part of the fix which helped reduce it, which started to raise some issues here in my own mind, uh, was the amount of RF getting into it. So there's um, there's ferrite chokes there clipped on there, on this line, and on the top line, and it almost stopped. So. I checked all of the lines, the lines are fine. I'm using RG213 on all of my jumper cables. Pardon the mess here. But as you can see, I've got them coming uh, out, got them coming in, and then the radio itself. Now the type of um, ballon that came with it, or it was, it, I was told it was a ballon, the seller was not none the wiser, that, that, that's, it's not his problem. Um, he was informed that it was a one-to-one -one ballon, of which this is pretty common in the market. So one would assume that it's uh, some sort of transformer match inside, um, giving us the one-to-one, -one matching the unbalanced line to the radio. All right, so obviously you can't get these open. It, it, was, it was well and truly sealed. So place it in hot water, boiled the water and opened it up now i'll just um separate this and we'll see what's inside okay a um, bit of a surprise here what we seem to have here is a, a ferrite choke rf choke ballon Oh, very interesting. Well, that's clearly not what um, High Gain, the antenna manufacturer, um, advises that they want you to use. They want you to use a transformer match. Uh, um, in order to give the right um, uh, matching to the radio. Um, their particular units are the BN86 and the BN4000, which is the three kilowatt version of that. All right. Now, one of the other things that have been having problems with the, with the radio when on HF, uh, it had a very, very, um, very thin uh, bandwidth. And the VSWR was at around about 1.4 to 1 in the lower part of the band. So about, around about uh, 14,130 to 14,150, uh, uh, it was around about 1.3 to 1.4. All right, so we have now installed um, a used BN86, 1.5 kilowatt, uh, 1.1 uh, matching uh, ballon to the antenna so let's let's go down and let's have a look put it into CW uh, surprise surprise 1.1 uh, uh, now let's see how much bandwidth we have oh wow
yes, I'm trusting the radio's VSWR meter, but we're only looking for a rough idea as to the matching, that's all. This is amazing. So it only just starts to climb at 14300. Around about 14300. And we go right up to the 14320 and we start to rise to 1.3 look at that and we're right at the band edge looks like we've found the solution to our problem okay we're back at the choke all right, well, I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to re-solder the joints. I'm very happy with what I've finally found out here. Um, I actually did a silly thing and trusted that this was a one-to-one -one bellon. And uh, it shows that um, out of investigation, uh, you, uh, you come up with answers. Now, I did a silly thing. I did not check this when I put it up. I assumed that... Uh, that that uh, this was um, used in the past and it worked very well on the antenna. Okay, so it clearly isn't. Um, it's, uh, it's just very small ferrite beads. I don't even know. I, I haven't opened this up to... That's no, just coax. No, it's more, no, it's obviously more. Yeah, it's fully. It's just heat shrink around. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, inside the heat shrink, it is uh, more of the ferrite beads. All right, so this does um, very little to nothing. That's the experience on this. Now I've used inline chokes on this particular coaxial feed line. And these are an example of these. These are the XRF um, line isolators, which basically are the same as uh, the, this, but the, the ferrites inside of these are almost, well, they, they match the width internally of this tube. Um, the only reason I know that, I haven't pulled these apart, is that the person that built these quite a few years ago showed me how they were actually made. They're very, very simple. Um, this one has around about 10 cores. This has about 20 inside of it. Um, these, work, these work quite well inside the shack uh, to reduce RF and also helps you to diagnose uh, where issues are coming from. And that's what I use these for. I actually don't use them on any antennas permanently. So basically what we've got here is um, basically the same however um, I think it's the construction of this is well and truly not designed for the tri-band uh, TH3 Yagi um, especially at the uh, uh, 380 watts amount that um, that we're using to uh, transmit through so there you go hope you enjoyed always investigate the antenna is working really happy, happily now, and uh, it, it, uh, it's funny how sometimes you start at the wrong end of the analysis <laughs> uh, because it's a bit hard. So um, uh, dropping the antenna, um, replacing it, putting in a proper transmatched or a transformer ballon uh, has totally changed the performance of the station. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, hope you're all well uh, with COVID, and stay safe, guys. Uh, uh, this is a great hobby and uh, um, experimenting and exploring, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing when you're, uh, when you're presented with the challenges we have these days. 73s.